Uh, good morning, my friends. Uh, it's a Sunday uh, morning here in Southampton, New York. Beautiful Sunday morning. I'm going on a service call in Amagansett. It's about a 40-minute ride. Uh, I'll take you along for the ride, and we're going to go out and check out a refrigerator, a 511 refrigerator, not cold enough, and the customer's got some renters coming in on Wednesday, so I'm just going to go out there and see what I can do, help them out. Precinct crime section officers and crime stoppers are looking for your help in locating the two. Suffolk County Police spokeswoman. Okay, we got our tools. Get our map. Thirty one minutes. No sense. Watching this ride, I'll turn it back on when we get there. Okay, so while we're driving onto this call on this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, I'm thinking about the refrigerator that we're going to check out. It's a model 511. It's got to be 30 to 35 years old. Customer says the refrigerator is not cold enough. So I'm thinking, well, it's probably a Freon issue. Most likely it's going to need a Freon, an evaporator coil, or it could be a condenser fan motor, or it could be a thermostat. I don't have my sealed system equipment with me today, so if, if it turns out being a Freon problem, we'll just charge it up for now and um, come back at another time to change the coil, if the customer wants to change the coil. So, that's that on that. Okay, we've arrived at our destination, and so let's go, go into the house. Customer said nobody's home. Hello, refrigerator service. Here it is. It's not a 511, I don't think. Oh, yes, it is. It's a 511 SS. Uh, 19, it's a 97, 25 years old. Units turn up to eight. Evaporator fan is on. Let's take the grill off. Mm. Because this is a typical problem on these older units, the, the paint peels down there. We can repair that, but I don't like to do it in the customer's home. I like to bring it into the shop, and that's not easy to do with a refrigerator like this. Oh, let me get some more screws in here. Somebody converted this to a, an SS model because this is, um, it doesn't say SS on the model number. Oh, yes, it does. It's a 550. I thought it was a 511. 
Oh, okay. And I feel heat. And I don't hear a fan running. Most likely, going to be step stool here. Uh-oh. I don't see the step stool. How am I going to get up there? <coughs> uh, hmm. Let's see if they have a closet here. Oh, here's one. Everybody has a step stool in their house. Well, somebody's worked on this before. There's your problem. Right there. Condenser fan motor is not turning and it's blasting heat up there. So there it is. So we're going to disconnect it. We're going to go out and get a motor and a pair of gloves. Condensers needs to be cleaned. It's not too bad. All right. Let's go get a motor. Okay. <clears throat> we uh, have run out of the factory motors and we're waiting for them to come in I think it's a 420 470 or something so I have to use this subco motor that's all I have right now let's take the <coughs> let's take the old motor out It's burning hot here. I should have brought a pair of gloves in here. Now, with the Subco motors, they're a little stronger than the factory motors. They, lots of people have complained that the, the motors are noisy. We do have a fix for that. We can use the newer, the, the black fan blades are a little less pitched and they make a little bit less noise. But this motor, this has a metal blade on it. It's a little bit different on the pitch. I see a, a cap here. Somebody was to gone into the system. But these are the original compressors. You know, back, back then, Sub-Zero put these process ports on the compressors. They don't do that anymore. You know, good reason, but just a little extra work when there's when you have to put a valve on. It's a, it's a big deal. So anyway, I got a video coming up with a uh, comparison between factory motors, factory condenser fan motors, and the Subco motors. I've got a, some test equipment. We're going to test the speed of the motor and also how much wind it produces, how much flow, airflow. That's an upcoming video. I'm just waiting for another tool to come in. I've got the, some of the instruments. All right, so this here, get to maneuver it out. Very gently, make some room here to get this out. Okay, so it's got a ground wire on it.
Now, <clears throat> these Subco motors are, this is a SM5109. It's a 2 watt motor, but the RPMs are a little higher than you need, so you're going to get a little bit of noise. And on these older units, the fans run all the time. Sometimes people will, if they have good hearing, they can say, well, you know, ever since you put that motor in there, I hear something all the time. So we always use the factory motors if you can get them. And right now we're living in a time where parts are short supply. If you can get them, sometimes you can't get them. So you have to supervise, improvise. And that's the reason why I have some videos coming out to show you how to improvise. Normally, <clears throat> when I use a Supco motor, I change the blade because the, the, the plastic, the white plastic blades that they used on um, most of the Sub Zeros, it's just got too much of a pitch to use a 1550 RPM motor. So, it's, it you know, cuts down the flow. Fingers are wet, slippery. Well, if you're a technician, <clears throat> sometimes it's a good idea to carry these little rubber bushings in your toolkit. I have a bunch of them. I bought them off the internet, a hundred of them. <clears throat> and they're just good to have around because you run into them and then you really can't do a good job if you, uh, if you don't have the right parts. You get a noisy wobbling motor.
Okay, now let's hook up the ground wire. See if I can get a little light on here. Really. This wire is just brittle. Hard. There's something about these these new bolts that are not quite the right size. All right, let's try something else here. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to get this nut started with this ground wire. And what? I'm going to use the old one. It's a little longer. Now, <clears throat> put the back screws in first. That's my recommendation. It's not easy to get to, but totally workable. I hope you can see this because I can't see what you can see. I'm using this new Ordo EP8 camera. This is the third one I bought. The first one I bought was an EP7. I used it uh, six times and it crapped out on me. <clears throat> so then I got an EP6 which didn't work. I sent it back just in time. I got my EP8 <clears throat> just in time. I need these cameras because um, I have to use 
both of my hands. I don't have a videographer available. Let's do most of this myself. stubborn okay we have to take this out So now, plug it in. There she goes. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but that sounds a lot louder than the normal sub zero motor. So it's imperative that we put the, the cover back on because that'll quiet it down a little bit. <clears throat> Save this stuff. You never know when you need it. So, obviously somebody took this apart at one time, put this spring on incorrectly. So, you know, if you find something wrong on a refrigerator, uh, fix, do it, fix it the right way because you're going to get blamed for it. Sometimes you have to clear other people's mistakes. The last guy to work on it gets the heat. Okay, I'm missing a little screw there. I think I have one of those. Okay, we're going to do a quick brush off on the uh, condenser. Uh-oh. I think I lost juice. I think 
fell off. So here it is. You gotta always carry this little brush. Actually, let's take a wet rag, wipe that down. Get the dust out. I can hear that fan. Normally on a sub-zero motor, you won't hear that. I mean, you'll hear it, but it won't be as loud. So, unfortunately, it's just the way things are right now with the supply chain. You have to deal with it. If the customer complains about the noise, I'll have to come back another time when I get the new Sub-Zero motors. It's just something strange about this setup. This is not the original grill. I mean, it's not the original grill. Somebody adapted that. What did I do with the screws for the grill? already feel the coldness in here. Okay, now, the guy gave me his credit card number. Let's see if we have Wi-Fi here. We might not be able to get on our app. Oh, there it is. This is an app that I designed for my business. Uh, let's see, I'm against it. Here it is. Okay. Okay. 
condenser fan motor. It's an SN 5109. Condenser fan motor. And I'll fill that all out. Take a picture. I have to retrieve the guy's credit card number and then I'll process it on uh, we have our own processor. Let me get the serial number. The serial number is 131, 131, 32, 32. Form of payment, credit card, replace Condenser fan motor and let's see. Okay, I'll finish filling this out and get the credit card approval number and then we'll be back on our way home. Uh, we'll get back to you uh, as soon as this, I'm finished processing this. Okay, we got our credit card processed. We're finished. That's it. That's basically a service call in a nutshell. The only thing I made a mistake on was the the model. I thought it was a five. I thought he said it was a five eleven. So it's no big deal. This house is right on the ocean. Oh God, it's beautiful. I don't normally work on Sundays, but I just want to get this call out of the way because it's so far away. Let me go back home. Do the crossword puzzle with my wife. Okay. home.